We are going to talk about some lighting hacks to instantly improve your live stream. My name is Craig. I'm Frank. And we're with Pro Church Lights. Pro Church Lights, we solely exist to help churches create distraction free, excellent, and intimate worship environments. That's what we do. Our heart is for the local church. We want to come alongside you and your local communities and really assist you to create. Um, just an excellent atmosphere for people to come in and worship and get to know Jesus. And um, we hope we can move into a relationship with you, and we encourage you, if you have any questions, please reach out and talk with us. We help you guys by focusing on lights. It's in our name, Pro Church Lights. Church is in there, lights is in there, that is what we do. So we're going to take it way back. We're going to go all the way back to the beginning, and God said, let there be light. Light is a critical component to everyday life, right? I think everyone would agree with that. So that's no different than for your live stream. It's, it's the same. Light is a critical component to our worship service and live stream. So every week we get responses from churches that sound like this. My, my live stream quality looks terrible. Our stream just doesn't look the way it should. Our live stream is so dark, it's just not good at all. And maybe that resonates with you. Maybe your live stream is just not where you think it can be or where it should be. We're gonna take a look at that. So let's talk about photography, right? When we look at our video, our video is really made up of just a ton of photographs. We're taking tens of thousands of little photographs that are being stitched together instantly. So remember that, photograph, let's talk about that. Photo equals light, right? That comes from the Greek word. Graphy, writing, photography, light writing, literally, it means light writing. So, once again, it comes from the Greek. We have to remember that. Photo means light. Just like photosynthesis, right? A, a plant cannot thrive without light. It needs to operate under photosynthesis. A photograph cannot be taken without light. So, we need to get in that habit, remembering that photo equals light. So, huge shocker here, right? Hack number one for improving your live stream. Light your stage. It's so simple, right? Yet, many churches don't have any dedicated lights aiming right at their stage. It's, you know, you may be laughing, but it's true, and maybe that resonates with you. So hack number one is simply just light your stage. Have dedicated light aimed at your platform. House lights, that's not enough light to just hit your stage and, and light the person on stage. Track lighting, probably too low intensity. It needs to be adequate output to light the people on your stage. That's gonna instantly improve your live stream. Let's look at an example. So, real quick, front wash. That is priority number one to improving your live stream. Sometimes this is called key light, sometimes it's called stage wash. So that front wash is that light that is hitting me right now that's illuminating the front of my body that the camera needs to make that image. So right here, we have our friends in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And when we started talking with this church, we simply asked them, like, what lights do you have in your space? Um, they came to us saying our, our live stream just does not look great. This church right here, you could see on the left side, that was the before, on the right side is the after. They did not have any lights aimed at their stage whatsoever. They had some lights on stage lighting the back wall, which actually made it worse because now the back wall is brighter than the pastor on stage, and it, it creates now a, uh, a hot spot on the back wall, and he blends into the back wall, and it's just not a great image. So on the right side, front wash is now included. There's some other elements we're going to talk about shortly in this image. But as you can see, front wash is critical. It's a night and day difference. So I'm going to kick it over to Frank here, and he's going to talk about the next element. And remember, we're still in hack one. It's simply just light the stage. Go ahead, Frank. Absolutely. So the second foundational part of hack number one for lighting your stage is backlight. So backlight, sometimes called hair light, sometimes called kick light. Now, you'll notice here in the photo that uh, the girl in the picture, she has this beautiful uh, uh, color of, of blue on her hair and her shoulders here. The purpose of that, it's kind of twofold. The backlight there, what it does, it helps to 
add a little bit of a creative element to the live worship experience, add some extra color on stage. But for live stream specifically, what it does, it helps people on camera have a little more of a 3D appearance on camera. So when you have purely just front wash, people can appear to be very flat against their backdrop. But once you add in that backlight, people have an ability just to pop more. So going again, yeah, going back to the photos here, you'll notice that in the first picture, like Carrie was saying, it's like no light, very minimal. There's that one color light on the back wall there. But in the second photo, the element I want to highlight to you is the backlight, which is the uh, this is the white here on top of Pastor's shoulders on his hair. On his hair. So you'll notice that he is, yeah, just has more of a 3D uh, definition to him, and he has like a clear beginning and end to where his body is in this picture. So it looks great overall. Yeah. So, hack number two: understand color temperature. This is important because your camera needs to reproduce whites and colors accurately, right? We don't want weird skin tones. We don't want blues and yellows and just strange colors happening. So understand color temperature. So simple um, color temp 101 here. Color temperature is measured in Kelvin. So the numbers on the screen here, 2000 on the left is going to be 2000K, which is going to be very warm and cozy. Think fireplace, very warm. On the opposite side of the spectrum, we have 10,000K. We're very cool and bluish and cold color um, feel. And then in that middle area, we're, we're like daylight, where it's white in that 5,000 to 6,000 um, K range. At Procher Slights, we recommend 4,000 K as a target. Your front wash lights should have that color temperature of 4,000 Kelvin. And that creates a beautiful white light, both in the room, where it's not too yellow and it's not too blue, but it also gives a great white light that the camera can then white balance off of and produce accurate skin tones. So color temperature is very important. Be sure to understand color temperature. And that's really all you need to know about color temperature to make sure that you're reproducing colors accurately. Hack three. Hack number three. Don't use color changing fixtures as your front wash. I know it sounds like it makes a lot of sense. Hey, let's use a red, green, blue, white mixing light for my front wash. I can use it for doing different colors during worship and it has a white chip built in. So I should be able to get a nice white, right? Not necessarily. So in this photo here, this is literally a, a screenshot that a church that we help come alongside to help serve with them. Uh, they sent us a, a picture of their live stream. And you'll notice here in the picture that the people in the in the shot, they have a very bluish and honestly very pinkish kind of tint to them. So if, if it was ever seen the, the movie, uh, TV movie Trolls with the pink little uh, cartoon characters, like this is like what kind of looks a lot like that. So very pink. It The fixtures, I'm sure, are trying to do its best version of white by mixing all the colors together. But this is the result uh, on the live stream. And also in person, I guarantee you, it has something very similar looking like that. It's not correct skin color at all. So real quick, we see this a lot. Be careful of this, right? The, the image on screen, a lot of churches just go up by the cheapest lights they can find. I think, once again, like Frank said, that color-changing lights are best. It is not. Please don't do this, especially that style of light, right? That is probably the poorest light output you can get. Um, that, is, that is a low-quality output. Please avoid that at all costs. We see this mistake happen every day, and it's unfortunate. Just be careful um, when, you're, when you're spending budget that has been hardly um, raised or, you know, we want to be good stewards of our funds and our, um, just the money available within our church and we want to do it right and we don't want to be throwing that away. So just be careful on that. That's good. So now that we express kind of that color changing fixture and not to do that, Frank, why don't you talk about this image yeah, now at that same church? Absolutely. So this is a really exciting photo because this is literally the next weekend after they implemented uh, proper front wash fixtures with the proper, uh, we'll talk about it in a little bit, with the correct uh, filter to help add, with, help add the correct color temperature to it. You'll notice now that the girl at Ling Worship, her skin tone on the live stream is actually very much more accurate to what she would appear in person. And I'm sure uh, in the live person experience, like this looks very accurate and realistic. So oftentimes the better the front wash quality, the easier time that the camera will be able to interpret skin tones properly. 
We'll continue with more lighting tips in a moment, but first, I want to tell you more about Pro Church Lights because Craig and Frank, the guys who are teaching in this video, they're not going to toot their own horns, but I want to do that for them. I am so excited about what Pro Church Lights is up to. I actually was able to hang out with them on site at a church that they did a big install just a few days ago. And of course, they joined us for our last Church Front Live event as a title sponsor. Since we've partnered with Pro Church Lights, we've already been able to recommend their fixtures and other lighting accessories for a lot of our clients in worship ministry school. And my favorite thing about them is that they are dedicated to serving the church and then their fixtures are at a great price point and they manufacture those fixtures themselves so they provide amazing support. In the video description below, I'm gonna link their catalog and I'm also gonna give you a link to their visual mock-up service. Churchfront subscribers get a discount on this service and this is an incredibly low cost way to be able to get a clear idea of what new lights would look like within your auditorium. You're gonna take a few pictures of your space, you're gonna submit them to the Pro Church Lights team, and then their lighting designers are gonna create this visual mock-up that you can give your pastor or your elder board so that they can see the effect that these lights will have on your space. So click the links below for the catalog or the visual mock-up service, and thanks again to Pro Church Lights. Let's continue on with the video. Hack four, match all your front watch fixtures to the same color temperature, right? So as I move across the stage, and I go from right to left or left to right, that all the, all the lights that are hitting me are the same temperature. If it's not, when I'm here, that color that's already been white balanced to some portion of the stage, maybe at the pulpit position, when I come here, it's not gonna give me a good representation of um, just accurate color because if we're not color matched, or we're not color temperature matched across our front wash, now we're seeing different versions of white light across the stage. So it's very important not to mix lights. And, and we see that too, where um, maybe a, a light is thrown here because it just needs some added fill, but a RGB fixture is put here and it's turned to white. And then when I step here, it's now a straight white fixture. That just does, it, it does, doesn't work. Um, it's, it's two different light temperatures. It's, it's also two different, just completely different styles of light. Um, Hack four, you know, match all front wash lights to the same color temperature. Um, once again, CTB filter with that. So with, with matching them all the same color temperature, introducing CTB across your front wash will help you um, in case you do have maybe a 30 or a, a light that's producing a 3200 Kelvin output, and maybe you have another one that's just seems off or is producing something maybe even warmer than that. You can then, instead of swapping those fixtures out, just put CTB gel in it that is the appropriate level of CTB. You can purchase CTB in quarter, half, three quarters, and full, and those are just different levels of CTB that will then boost whatever that original color temp source is to wherever your sweet spot, which is 4,000K, which you're trying to reach. So CTB is pretty easy to get a hold of. You can search around online for that. Hack five. Yeah. Hack number five. Know what your camera is saying. Okay, so I'm a programmer by trade, so I love program lights for worship. And one of the most helpful tools for me as I'm you know, LDing is having what's called a multi-viewer next to me at, at the at front of house next to the lighting station, okay? So in this photo here, this was uh, at an event I was doing in Chicago, and I'm running my council, but you'll notice on the left-hand side that I have my handy multi-viewer there. So I requested that the tech director would set that up so that way I could help intelligently have my lights at colors and brightness levels that would be adequate and look good on camera. So as I'm programming, I'm watching my live experience happening in front of me as I'm programming and running lights, but I also would be watching the, the multi-viewer from time to time to make sure that my lights were not blowing out and also making sure that I was not uh, basically kind of messing with the camera, what they're seeing, essentially. So hack five, collaboration, and more importantly, intentional collaboration. Light and video go hand in hand. It's very important that communication and short, quick meetings are just happening to talk through cues or maybe just stuff that's not working. Maybe on the video side, they're just seeing something that is just not working well with camera shots or um, brightness or levels. So even, it doesn't matter, right? The, the, the image on screen is a fairly big worship service with a lot of elements, right? 
scale that all the way back to the most minimal worship service. And the same is true in that instance. It is important for communication and collaboration to happen so that we can continue to improve our live stream experience to create that distraction-free um, experience that, that they can just focus on the message and not, not something going on on screen that it just, it just keeps um, bothering them. Yeah, hack number six, camera position awareness. Okay, so kind of going along with the, you know, the intentional collaboration, making sure you're working alongside the video director. When you're a lighting designer, lighting programmer, it's important to make sure that you're working with them, not against each other. So camera pos position awareness. You'll notice here in the next photo that um, essentially there is a, there's a, you know, we want to make sure that whatever position that we have our lights programmed at, we want to make sure that the camera is not having to battle us as we're going through and running our light scenes. Okay, so you'll notice here in this picture that you know now this I imagine and I'm I'm confident that this look right here probably looked amazing in the in-person experience. So just like that really bright white, uh, bright whiteish blue. Uh, side fill light happening in the shot here. It probably looked amazing and really cool, but you'll notice that, in my opinion, in this one right here, the camera, like the camera is being, you know, there's like this bright ball of light happening there. So to, to us, like that's probably a little bit more in the area of like, eh, distracting, a little, a little funny looking on camera. So in this sort of situation, this might be something I would try to pull back that light if possible, or even consider if I was setting up the stage, having this light actually positioned somewhere else if I want to do something like that. So that way, my camera operators would not, you know, have to battle me as I'm like running my light. Yeah, exactly. And that's where that multi-viewer um, element comes in that Frank was talking about, where if he saw this in the camera shot and he did have it on a fader, he could just pull that intensity back and it would, it would just make that shot much better um, instead of blowing it out and creating this this ball of light. So hack seven, this is a little broad here, but within light, you know, we, we do have to deal with reflection and control and splash of light. So with reflection, shirt choices make a difference. Um, it, you know, if, if I'm wearing a black shirt and my background is black, I could potentially become just a floating head, right? And we want to avoid floating heads. The same is true if I'm wearing a white shirt and a white background and everything's maybe overexposed because it's so bright and the lights are at 100%. So, you know, there's a few things you can do if you, you know, if you can't um, gain any traction with, with shirt recommendations, um, there's things in your lighting, um, you know, in, in your world of control that you can um, do. You can back down intensities. Don't run at 100%. You should never be running your lights at 100%. Um, they should be back down. So that would maybe help just things not overexpose and then also making sure that your, you know, your brightness and your exposure settings on your camera are correct. But also if I'm wearing a black shirt and that black background, instead of being a floating head, I could light my background with a wall wash or something. That way it's now not black and it's giving um, just a backdrop so I can be separated from it and not be a floating head. We want to avoid floating heads, right? So. Hack eight um, kind of rolls right into that, where in this example, kind of a black sweatshirt, um, you know, with kick light, that helps as well. So as long as you have those key elements in there, um, you can help then your pastor or whoever's on stage pop off and not just create this weird image that we just want to avoid. Um, so in this image, you can see some wall wash, the kick light really helps separate them. Um, you know, this is a simple example of just wall wash on that backdrop, um, which would just help the people on stage just stand off when that camera zoomed in on them. And then same thing here as well. Just, uh, you know, even, even to add some just extra color, we want to make our image interesting as well to keep the brain just engaged, right? Um, if people are watching the image, so it's difficult. We're not in person worshiping together in a big room with a real life experience. We are in front of a monitor or a phone or a computer or, um, you know, a screen. We're just on a screen. Therefore, we do want to make it interesting just so the brain stays engaged. So adding a little bit of color to the backdrop is a very easy way to help make that image more interesting. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Hack number nine, wipe out your cameras with your lights on. Okay, so now this hack here, 
it's highly recommended that you to get the most potential out of your uh, your cameras for your live streaming experience, your live your live stream. Uh, have your light fixtures at the settings and the levels, brightness, colors, etc., at what they will be during worship or during the message. Okay, so in terms of like levels of importance and priority, in terms of like light programming, the lighting scene for the message is going to be the most important lighting scene you're going to do. I know it, you might you might you might be thinking, oh man, I want to program amazing lights for worship, which is yeah, you should aim for that as well. But making sure that the message is clear there's nothing really distracting or funny looking so that way taken away from the the the, the power the power of the message like that is incredibly important so we for hack number nine have your camera set to the love set to the levels and then using a white card and having your cameras aimed at that have your white balance dialed into that so that way it has the best representation. Yeah, absolutely. And that goes back to that collaboration, right? Work together. Once your light levels are set, you know, let your video team know, hey guys, I'm set, I'm good to go. We can go ahead and white balance now. Um, and vice versa, if, you know, if, if they're ready to go and you're just tweaking, just, just talk back and forth with each other. It'll make all the difference, right? We've seen stages and, or we've, we've just talked with churches and they'll white balance without the stage lights on. Just make sure your camera team knows that they just need to wait till lights are fully on um, and not to come up here and white balance to just your house lights or chandeliers in the room. They need to wait till those stage lights are pushed up. Yep, exactly. So hack 10, shameless plug, like talk with a lighting expert, right? Um, you know, you can gain, you, you can go further quicker by just talking with people um, who have, have been through a lot of just different buildings or different situations, talk with a lighting expert. It'll just help you move quicker. Um, feel free to reach out to us. We honestly want to just help local churches um, just create excellent, excellent worship environments. Um, so if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us, Pro Church Lights, um, and we'd love to help you guys and answer any questions you may have. Absolutely. Yeah. As a quick word, just an encouragement to you guys. Seriously, thank you so much for, uh, yeah, like helping establish a live stream, you know, during like the whole COVID stuff that went down. I know the enemy intended to use that for, you know, evil. But what's amazing to me is how God turned around for his good, because now through, through live stream being so readily available and so many churches do utilizing it now, the church's reach is, is even wider as ever been in the history of mankind. So thank you so much for all the hard work and dedication and yeah, and we love coming alongside you and helping you be able to help create the best quality live stream as possible. So, you know, we love you guys. We're here for you. Yeah, thank you.